So let me introduce you to um, my good friend and former student and co-worker, Chris Coe. Let's give it up for Chris Coe. Thank you. And uh, I will say this. Um, I don't know, you probably all have some photo friends, right? You have photo friends? Yeah? I, I would say, like, make a commitment to their vision and artistry, you know? Um, and they make a commitment to yours. And you're going to be a better photographer if you have an assistant. You know, like, I, I couldn't really do today or... I, I'm not as good a photographer without one. You know, certain situations I have to not have one. Sometimes it's kind of nice to be solo, rogue, you know, going out there with my little speed light and doing my little thing. But in certain situations where I have to shoot tethered and I just can't be in many places at once, you know? So he helps my job work a lot better. And I do think, um, you know, Einstein said this great thing, you can't solve a problem with the consciousness that created it, right? Like many times I get stuck or boxed into a spot, right? I don't know how to get out of the spot, you know? And, um, and I have these blind spots, maybe stuff I know, and, and dude's gonna help me figure stuff out, you know, period, you know? And don't be afraid, like if you get a big job, don't be afraid to get somebody who knows more than you, right? Like a good boss, let's talk about boss, right? Like a boss, dumbest person in the room, right? A good boss surrounded by smart people. Like my friend said, you know, I'm working for this guy, I know more about photography than he does. I'm like. Sounds like a good boss. You know, he's like, what do you mean? He's like, I, I'm like, no, you know, this guy, that's what you do. You know, you don't want to, so get somebody who knows more than you, not that Chris knows more than me, but <laughs> no, I'm joking. Just a little bit. <laughs> so um, we're talking about the inverse square law. Let's get that light on, Chris. Let's yeah. just talk a little bit about what we're using, right? In case you want to know, Profoto D2s, right? It's a mono light, it's all built in here, AC powered. Capacitors up here, 1,000 watts, really powerful. What is the speed light? How many watts does the speed light have? How many watts? Watts. Does anybody know? No? Anybody know? Yeah. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, Beautiful pictures of this foam core. <laughs> um, ooh, oh boy. Okay, so let's just get that really flat and perpendicular, Chris. Mm -hmm. Get that light on, and just pull it back like maybe a foot. Yeah. Yeah. Right about there. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Turn that model light on, please. All right. So it has this little air remote comes with it, right? Um, and we're a big advocate of the light meter. Can I see your light meter for a minute, Chris? Sure. Like, there, there's many teachers, and I know they build me as, like, an expert, right? Like, I'm a lighting expert. I don't know. I'm guys had some experience lighting stuff, right? You know, I teach lighting, so I might be considered an expert, but I never, like, want to call myself an expert because I don't feel like I have all those technical pieces that the experts have, and I don't think you need them, right? But I do believe in this. I've seen, I've been watching Creative Live, and what's cool here is you can see many educators. Some are gonna tell you to throw this thing out, right? Other guys are gonna tell you to use this thing, right? So I think there's as many ways to practice photography as there are people in this room, right? There's not, I can't tell you my ways of the right way, but this is the way I use. I don't, I'm not gonna say, you don't know about light if you don't have one of these things, but if I wanna know what my electronic flash is doing and not guess and shoot, it helps me get there quicker, right? So who, who we have one of these, anybody use one of these? Thank God, thank God, thank you, all right, cool. Um, I don't know how to work without one. So like, you know, I think if you learn to work without one, it might be easier, right? So it's just gonna read the electronic flash for me, that's what it does in case, you know, I imagine if you got one, there'd be its own video that you could rabbit hole, you could go down and learn all about this, it could be its own, episode of Creative Live, but we're just gonna talk about it in a general way, if that's all right, is that all right? It's cool with you, good, thanks. All right, all right. so um, give me a pop, Chris. 16, eight, now, wonderful things I can change to increments. We're shooting 100 ISO, in case you're wondering, why are we shooting 100 ISO? Anybody wanna guess? Low grain. Pardon? Low grain. Low grain, good quality image. We're in the studio. This is as powerful as the sun, right? We want the best quality image. Da 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 da. There's a million reasons, right? Um, so this can just 
incrementally change, which is great. Once more. OK, set it to 22. Mm -hmm. You can also set it on the uh, Capture One. We're also shooting tethered to Capture One Pro, which is just what I like to use. It doesn't have that little bit of lag that Lightroom has. I don't know if you shoot tethered to Lightroom, but it, when you're teaching, that little bit of lag is my impatient. I'm not very patient. You know what I mean? <clears throat> All right. So um, we're 22 right here. And let me just frame it up. I should just put this in the middle so I can focus on something. All right. All right, thanks. All right, sweet. 22. Let's just uh, give me some more pops just so we can talk about it. So right at the edge here, I got 22. About 16 here. Eight and a half. Five, six, four. What, those are just numbers, but we'll just see how that looks. Just going to fire one. We're live here. Cool. Great. All right. Looks a lot like those weird illustrations we're looking at before, right? So we got light exposed well here, right? This good exposure giving me a white. You know, I'm uh, at F22, so F22 here. And as it goes left to right, it goes to 5.6. And I don't think you can, um, you really got to get to know those, those numbers, you know. They're, I must think, like, it would be stupid if they were, they're tattooed in my mind, seared into my brain. And that's why I talk about the difference between, like, learning and knowing, like they need to be in you, a working part of you, like, like, uh, like committed to your muscle memory, like when the dancer goes to do the pirouette, she's not, I'm going to do this pirouette, it just happens, right? There's that sort of commitment we need to make here. So um, 22, 16, um, 11, 8, 5, 6, uh, 4, I'm so afraid I'm going to mess them up after I just talked about how they were like seared in my mind. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, they're inverted. I think I feel like I should do them the other way around so they go this way, but it would be confusing, right? Let me do that. Um, even though it's. Um, Right on. Right on. So just so we're looking at, this is like the edge of the board right now, right? It's coming from here and going to there, right? So that's what we're looking at with the light very close, right? Just for the record, right? Five, six is where it ended on the uh, other side. Do you have the light meter? Yeah. Just want to check that. Give it to me again. Point it at it. Oh, it's about at four. OK, great. All right. All right. So over that course of that foam core, we have one, two, three, four, five stops of light kind of falling off left to right. Now what we're going to do is just double the distance of that light. Does that feel? About double? Is it about double? OK, say it's cool. a bit more than that. All right. Give me a pop there, Chris. 285, 284. Two eight even. Okay, so just shoot one at this. Mm -hmm. Two eight five. So that's like, what number is that? Two eight five. Yeah. Call it three five. I'm gonna call it three two. Yeah. All right, coming this way. All right. All right. Cool. Just put them up side by side. All right. So we're just looking at how light moves, how it operates, how it behaves. Right. It's a bit of review for some stuff. Is this helpful? I, I don't know. I always think it's helpful to see and begin the conversation here. Right. So we had um, in the next picture. Right. This is very close. Right. And this one actually goes um, to wait this way. 
right? I don't know how to draw this, but it's not really working. It's only falling off, like, see how it's falling off so evenly here, right? Because it's only one stop difference left to right, right? So as the light moves farther away, it falls off much more evenly, right? Here, very close, gonna fall off very quickly. And this is really how the base of how we control light in the studio, and we'll look at this with the person in a second and how it might work and operate for you. Um, but it's key. Uh, it's key. So let's look at it with a, with a person, then we're gonna look at it with a group, and we're gonna look at it just how it haunts us, how it annoys us, how it drives us sometimes crazy. You with me? Driven mad by the light. <laughs> In fact, why don't you come up? You want a model? I forgot your name. Alex. Alex. Yep, come on up, bro. All right. So, um, right here, Alex. All right. Over the trap door. <laughs> All right. Um, let's just move that light around pretty close to him. Can you give me a pop, Chris? E3, let's just come down a couple tenths on this. One thing that's really nice about this light is I can dial tenths of a stop so I can like get incremental on it, pop me again. I get F8 even, right? So I got some pretty bright light on the side of his face. Turn towards that light and uh, turn back. And I do think a good part of like uh, working with strobe is, is really just kind of looking at your modeling light, see how it's falling. That's what they're gonna help you with, you know? So just. Sometimes one way I connect with the subject, you know, there's a lot of ways. I'll just be like, oh, I'll pretend I'm a mirror, you know, and I'll just like turn my head with them. We'll look at each other, right? We're kind of doing this like monkey see, monkey do thing. I don't know, kind of, kind of connects you in a weird way. Or I'll connect with them. I'll be like, I'll get in here. I'll be like, how you doing, Alex? I look at the light. I get in their animal space. I kind of invade them a little bit, and uh, I don't know why I do that, but it's kind of, you know, <laughs> just look at that light, make sure it's where I want it. Um, um, yeah, so we're talking F8 even. Yep. Camera set to F8. It is. All right, what's beautiful is Chris is setting my camera in the Capture One program. He can fully control it, so when I pick it up, because I've got a lot of my mind here at Creative Live, right? You know what I mean? F stops, bus stops, you know, it's kind of maddening, right? So, Alex, move into that light a little bit. Can I get a half apple box, please? Sure. Yeah, cool. Chin up a little bit. Yep, down a little bit. Can you, is, it, is it hard on you? Are you squinting? Right. Yeah, that's bright. All right. Great. Green face, ice grill. Mm -hmm. Chin up a little bit. Yeah, cool. Great. All right, so we're on the screen. Sweet. So we're just looking at raw, hard light. We're looking at how it behaves, how it moves light to dark, how it relates to the background, right? He's on a um, gray background. Um, is that all looking exposed well and everything? I can't really see. Yep, it is. OK, all right. Great. So, um, you know, that gray background, when we look at it, it's considerably lighter than it looks right now, correct? Right? So if we were just gonna bring this light back, and Chris, bring this light back really far. Yeah. You know? Yeah, let me clear some space for you. Even further? Yeah. Alex, is this pointing at you? Take a look. Right. Yeah, I'll eyeball it, too. This way. Like yeah. That? yeah, perfect. Yeah, cool. And we're probably going to have to go up a bunch on that. So get that apple box back yep. and go up on that. I'm going to also make this F.A. even, Steven, so it's like consistent. I do think a part of when we do all these experiments, like if everything changes all the time, it gets a little confusing. So I just keep like the angle of the shot. And, and again, we're like, I don't know if we're like making bangers right now or shooting the lights out as much as we're just looking at light. Okay, so you might be thinking like, why didn't he shoot five frames of them? Why didn't he try to make a good picture? Right? We're just looking at light. All right, you with me, Alex? Yep. Let's go up like three numbers, four numbers on that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, can you go up one more stop? Yep. And a half stop? All right, F8 even. It's at F8 too, if you could go down a little bit. Give me once more. Sweet, okay. And you know, I'm not like 
hitting Alex in the nose with this thing, right? You know what I mean? I hate it when, if my assistant's doing this job and he's like, let me read the light, and that's just bad etiquette. I'm sorry, Alex, right? Okay. Yeah, is that all right? You wanna hit me in the face <laughs> with it a couple face. times? There yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, just be mindful of people, you know what I mean? Or you might say step out or, you know, so you don't wanna just punch anybody in the face with a light meter. Or, or maybe you do, you know? Maybe that's gonna help your picture, right? So got my little half apple since I'm a shorty, right? Helps me get right with Alex here. Right, this is still F8, uh-huh. Good, keeping that similar angle with your head, shooting a little bit straighter, back a little bit. Yeah, cool. He's searing at me, he's giving me the game face, that's great. And let's just throw these up side by side, right? So it's really hard to believe that these are the same light, right? Can you come over here, Alex, and just take a look, right? Like, it's just not looking at all the same, right? You with me? You know? What's different? Just a popcorn machine, what looks different? How's the picture on the left look? Much harsher. Much harsher. Harsher how? Uh, it's dark, yeah. Richer shadows. Richer shadows, right? So you're going to get that contour and that shape and that richer volume with the light closer, OK? So mistake number one, biggest mistake I see people make if you want a game changer. Yes, you're writing it down. Thank you. <laughs> All right? Everyone just puts their lights too far away, right? You know, like, I think that's mistake number one. Like, sometimes you have to, right? There's always going to be an exception. If I want to light a big area, I'm going to have to pull my light far away, right? To light a big area evenly. It's going to have to happen sometimes. But, um, you know, if you want a little mood, a little volume, a little texture, a little bit of attitude, maybe we want to light with some attitude, huh? Yeah. All right. Um, so the Farther the light is or closer to light, I'm not talking about specific light mm -hmm. or brand. Does it affect the quality of the light? Absolutely. That's and this is, this is a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Because this is our mantra. This is, this is, I think, everything you need to know. You know, is this inference square law and this other theory. And you may have heard this before. The closer the light, the, the softer the light, right? So this ain't your first rodeo, Doug, huh? You've been here for a couple, right? So the closer the light, the softer the light. The farther the light, the harder the light, right? The bigger the light, the softer the light. The smaller the light, the harder the light. And we're gonna look at this, right? So this is a very hard light source, very point source, you know? The sun's a very point source, really super far away, right? The sun's so far away, it's never gonna change, like if we go from here to here, it's never gonna be like F16, F11, F8, F56, right? Because it's so far away, it's just gonna get F16 all day, right? So this is the thing. Closer to the light, softer to the light. That one confuses me. I think when it's closer, it should be harder, yeah. right? No, it's not like that. Because when it's close, it's bigger in relationship to my fat head here, right? As it goes away, it becomes smaller in relationship to my head. And this is things like, I know it might seem um, a little slow right now, but we're going to heat it up, you know, into one of my you know, specialties. I photograph groups, right? Who's photograph groups? Just, oh yeah, okay. So um, what's a pain in the hiney <laughs> um, about photographing groups, right? Just shout it out. I'll Even repeat lighting. it for you. What's that? Even lighting. Even lighting, right? So the inverse square law becomes a pain in the butt. And what else is a pain in the butt with photographing groups? Focus. Where to focus? Two individuals and individuals and getting them to be a group is, is tricky. Yeah, to be a group. And, and that's easier when you have real groups. You know, I'm going to form a group today with you guys, right? <laughs> so. Um, We'll just do that, but, uh, but when they have a little bit of chemistry, it, it helps, you know, when they clown around, it helps. Like, you know, you shoot Metallica, those guys are like, playing air guitar, you know? I'm like, wow, I didn't know Metallica played air guitar, but somehow air guitar became cool again once I saw Metallica playing air guitar, right? So, um, you know, they're doing that. They're like, they're clowns. They really put it out there for you, you know? Um, so that is a challenge, getting them to interact. What's challenging about photographing groups? There's other things. Depth of field. Depth of field, sure. Okay. Uh, when some of them ruin it on purpose. Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. When they don't cooperate, yeah? When they just make weird faces, kids? Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, uh huh. Um, other things I think are challenging are composition, right? How do you compose them, right? How do you make it like less static, you know, more, have more dimension to it? You're a musician, aren't you? Did I read that in your thing? Yeah. Uh huh. From music background. Music background. Well, you photographed a lot as a. Yeah, take the mic. You can stand up, please. Yeah. 
Um, as a musician, I wasn't necessarily getting like the shoots you were talking about. Uh -huh. I was more like the live performance. We were getting a lot of those. Okay. Um, I did do a couple photo shoots, but it wasn't on the level like of the stuff you were showing. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But in my experience, photographing groups, the hardest thing is lighting, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Just because unless you can get it way above everyone and way back, it's like you're going to have hard shadows no matter what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And like... God forbid anyone has a different skin tone. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of the stuff I do is at night when I bring mm -hmm. the flash out just to yeah. make it like you were talking about grittier and yeah. stuff gets complicated yeah. quick. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's a good point. And that is a key. We're going to look at that today. It's like um, getting the light up and in, right? So boom stand is key and photographing group.